Welcome to part three of my Ableton tutorial series. My name is Isaac Ravel and my website is seattleaudiophile.com. You can find all these videos at Seattle Audio File. This one is going to cover some MIDI and basically get you started making some of your own music in Ableton just with the software that you get. So let's go ahead and start up Ableton. And we'll start in the arrangement view. And to add a MIDI track, all you're going to do is right click and go to insert MIDI or if you want, you can go up to Create, Insert MIDI Track, and the MIDI track will appear in your arrangement view. You can hit the drop down, and there's all the options. Uh, it's not completely, you can't see all of the options, like the volume and the panning control, even if you hit Tab and go into your mixer control or session view, as some people call it. Well, Ableton calls it session. I like to call it mixer because it looks like a mixer. But uh, over here, you don't have very many, there's no volume control, no panning control, no sends. Uh, that's because there's no instrument added to this track yet. So we're going to need to go ahead and add an instrument. But, but first, I want to talk a little bit about the keyboard. You can use your uh, computer's keyboard as a MIDI controller. This button right here enables and disables that. It's enabled right now because I'm going to be using my keyboard as my MIDI controller for this tutorial. Uh, and... Just by having it yellow means that it's selected. So now, if I arm this track and I hit any of the keys A through L or Q through P, Q through P will are your black keys. Only some of them work. You see, you got some signal coming through A, D, F, whatever. The only downside to this is that you can't tell how hard you're hitting it. Most MIDI keyboards will be able to tell you, will be able to input that information with your keystrokes automatically. This only has a toggle and not on and off so uh, you're limited by that so let's go ahead and add an instrument and Ableton up here this is your uh, device manager it has all of your plugins like your VSTs will show up here and uh, all of your you can sort of explore your computer have specific files set aside for various plugins or samples but Ableton has its own default place where it keeps all of the stuff that comes with Ableton. There's an instruments, MIDI effects, audio effects, and I'm just going to go ahead and grab uh, some random instrument here. Let's go to the instrument rack. Uh, I mean, uh, electric guitar. Here's, here's a random electric guitar synth. Can we hear this? Okay, so I'm using my keyboard and clicking the keys. And holding up my laptop to the mic because it's not really... That's the only way I can do it. Sorry, I have a cold. I'm going to try not to be as sniffly as possible. But uh, So now that we have an um, instrument set up, we can see down here in our audio effects, this is the instrument control panel right here. And you can see you can switch between the, uh, the sort of signal chain, and this is your clip view right here. And as you'll see, there's no clip selected. So let's talk about clips. Up here in our instrument, we've got a big series of, uh, these are all clips, each of these little slots here with a little circle on it. The reason that it's a circle is because this track is armed. If I click this and it goes off, it's just, it become, they all become stop buttons. But since I want to be recording some MIDI loops on this track, I'm just going to hit record. And now this track is ready to start getting some MIDI loops. The easiest way to start making some MIDI is to double click on one of these. And now that you have a, tr a clip selected, you can look down here in the clip view. And this is your, well, this is the clip view. And go back to the other tab, and this is your audio effects. If you wanted to add an EQ, you would drag it down into this area. And I'll be covering that later. But uh, here's your clip view. And uh, as I hit notes, you can see that they kind of show up here on this little keyboard. If I click and drag to the right, I zoom in, click and drag to the left, I zoom out, there, I'm making some music, except nothing is being recorded yet. To start recording, I hit the play button on the, t on the clip that I have selected, and down here in the, in the clip view, you see that we have a playhead that's going back and forth. I'm, I don't think you'll be able to see the entire thing because I'm, I'm a little zoomed in with my screen capture here, but uh, as I play anything, it just kind of remembers what I've done. 
So let's see if I can actually do that where you can see it. I'm using, again, I'm using the keyboard on my laptop, which is enabled up here to be my MIDI controller as my instrument, so. And it's, it's got exactly what I did. I'm going to put it up to the key. There, so I've made a little bit of a, a loop. What's great is I hit Apple Z because and it, and it all goes away because I, or Control Z if you're on a PC, it'll record one loop through. And if you hit Apple Z once, it will get rid of your one loop through. So for example, it's hard to explain. So for example, let's go ahead and start, start the playhead moving. And I'm just going to be hitting some C's. So it's, now this is looping, and I want to add some Fs. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about, uh, uh, what am I doing? Let's see, C, D, E, F. Oh, Fs. But I don't like the way that they lined up. So if I hit Apple Z, rather than it getting rid of everything, it just gets rid of those Fs, because every time the playhead plays once, that series of notes that you've played are locked into your clip. If you hit Apple Z, it go it un it undoes one cycle through. So if you've uh, uh, gone and layered some, put, a, put one layer that you don't like, just hit Apple Z once and it'll take one step back for you. So I'm going to hit Apple Z again, clear my clip view. And uh, let's say that I, let's, okay, let's play something. Let's say I don't like the way that this is lined up, but I don't want to just go and keep trying to, to make it work over and over again. What I would like to do, uh, if I want to match this to a grid, and this is the grid right here, one and two, and these, these bar breaks right here. And uh, you can actually alter the grid, side note, right click on the grid, and you can change how it's divided up. Now it's a little bit more complex and I can actually click on specific notes and line them up to the grid. And you can do this while it plays too. Another cool trick is uh, click off into space, Apple A or Control A, so you're selecting everything, and then like watch, watch this right at this spot. Apple U or Control U, is quantize, which means it'll uh, automatically align everything to the nearest grid point that it can. If I uh, had the grid simpler, one eighth like this, you see we've got some stuff into space. I'll just do Apple U again, and it goes to the nearest grid space. But that's not what I wanted to do. I can just do controls Apple Z, Apple Z, Apple Z. It's all going back, but the grid does not change as I do that. Um, but for now, Apple A, Apple U, or right click and quantize, and everything is aligned to the grid. And I can go in and just make whatever tweaks I want. I can use, you're just gonna have to mess around with it. I can actually change the length of these. And you get it, you're kind of started. Now let's say I want to double the length of this. All I would have to do, here's the length, I want to double it, so I'm going to click and drag up once, and now my phrase is, my phrase is twice as long. So when I hit play again, it just plays off into space. So I've just filled up some more stuff. I hit Apple Z. I'm going back incrementally for some reason. I forget how why I do that. But uh, if I wanted to zoom in more, let's well let's step forward. I'm going to go ahead change the length again, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a little bit more. There, I've added some more stuff. But I only I only want to loop a small portion. Up here is your loop section. Oh, I'm going to quiet it for a second. Up here is to select what part you actually want to loop. 
I can click, move this in, and just select like that part. This is the only part of this clip that I want to actually loop is what's highlighted right now. So when I hit play, it's just going to go ahead and play whatever I, I had selected. And uh, it'll stay that way until I change it. And let's say I, I'm done making this loop. I, I'm, I'm satisfied with what I've got here on this clip. So I can move on to the next one. Double click and repeat the process. Uh, and then basically the idea is you can go back through and trigger these, these clips as you're going through and it'll just kind of automatically do that for you. Um, another thing that you can do, since these are just record buttons, if you just hit, and you don't even need to be on the next one, hit record, down here at the bottom, it's just going to keep recording until you, and you can, you can just add stuff indefinitely. And then you can, let's say, all right, out of all of this uh, five minutes of me playing, I only like this one little piece. Come in, select it, and that's all I want to loop. Hooray! I made the most retarded loop ever. Awesome. Part two, go back to the beginning. All right. So that's getting started in clips. Uh, remember to go back to your uh, signal chain, you can go in here and like, let's say I wanted to alter the sound a little bit. I've got my instrument controls or Ableton comes with some audio effects. For instance, uh, EQ. Just click and drag the EQ in here. And let's say number one, we're going to make a, a shelf here. Just lift it up. And now my highs are emphasized. And now my highs are being kind of ducked. Here we go. So that's kind of an intro to using clips in MIDI. I hope that gets you started. Uh, I recommend moving on to part two, which is going to get a little bit more in depth with clips. Uh, thank you.